I got this fire sleeve in the mail yesterday from Aircraft Spruce so I can finish putting those hoses together. It's been several days since I put this hose together initially and I've just let it sit here with the air gauge on it and it hasn't changed any. The you know, air pressure hasn't changed any. So that's good news. First thing I'm going to do is mark up this hose. This is uh, one hose that I want to replace. And then I'm going to cut it off with a Dremel tool. And instructions say you can cut it off with a hacksaw with a real fine tooth blade on it. They recommend a fiber cutoff wheel. This real thin cutoff wheel should work pretty good on that. should work better than the chop saw type stuff that they use in the shops. Now they recommend that you wrap the uh, hose with some masking tape several times and that helps keep it from fraying. Take a piece of paper and just wrap around that hose there where the cut goes and that will give me a square mark. Okay, that's not too bad a cut. That's actually better than the one that was on the hose that came from Aircraft Spruce. Okay, I don't need to do anything with that. The ones that I had from Aircraft Spruce, I put them on my disc sander and sanded them down to smooth them down, but these ones are actually pretty good. Now i got to cut some fire sleeve and put on there. I don't think the fire sleeve will go over the, no, the fire sleeve won't go over the fittings. That's the reason I had to wait on those is I have to put the fire sleeve on there uh, before I put the fittings together. I have to measure that out and put it on there and then I can put the fittings on. Of course I got more than enough there. Wasn't sure how much I needed. It's always better to have more than enough than not quite enough. I'll push it back through farther than what it needs to go so that I can get this end on there. So I'll go ahead and assemble this hose now. I've got this first one all assembled. I still have to put the keepers, there's uh, clamps that go on this fire hose to hold it on. Oh, I still got to put those on, but basically this first hose is assembled. Oh, I'm going to wash this out. I use my favorite cleaning solution. Works for almost any get oil or anything to solve it, washes it off. Washes the diesel right off the, or the gasoline oils right off the cylinder walls so you don't want to use it in an internal combustion engine but it works great for a uh, portable cleaning solution. It's got its own propellant in there, you don't need an air compressor. So I want to wash this out and make sure you get all of the rubber, any shavings or anything like that that's down in that hose out of there. Get that wash clean. I've got the first hose done. Got the fire sleeve on it, got both ends on it. I just set it up here now to do a pressure test and just pressurized it. And we got a little over 50 pounds. We'll let that one set and test that one. Make sure that it's watertight, airtight, oil tight, good and tight. And then I'll go I'll go ahead and go take that other hose off of there, build it, make it the right length. I have to cut it off to the right length too. I've got these <coughs> bands for the uh, fire sleeve on there. I thought I could put those on and pull them on with a pair of pliers or something, but uh, I wouldn't have much luck with that. So rather than ruin those, I'll have uh, Jim bring up his tool when he comes and then he can put those bands on there. That first hose is tested. It's been under pressure for a couple hours now. It's staying right at 50 pounds, 55 pounds, so we'll uh, Blow it off, take this fitting off, and do the other one. Okay, hose number two is under pressure. It didn't blow up, so that's a good sign. Let that one sit for a while. I finished making up these hoses the other day. I got the fire sleeve, I cut it off, and slipped it over the hoses. And cut these off to length, and then made up the other end that I didn't make up the first time that I was playing with these. And then I put them on the oil cooler so I could mount the oil cooler up and get an idea of how it was going to mount up. I had to repair that baffling that the oil cooler mounts up to. And, but these weren't finished yet. I got these clamps to clamp them down here on the end and these fire sleeves are not finished until you get them clamped down. You've got to clamp them down so that any fire or anything can't get in in between the uh, tubing and the fire sleeve. So that's what the clamps are for, not, not just to hold the 
fire sleeve in place but to clamp it down so he, uh, flames and stuff can't get in there. I bought those with a fire sleeve and had them sent up with thinking that I could put those on by just uh, pulling them with a pair of pliers but once I got here I could see that I couldn't do that they were just too stiff to do that. There's a special tool that you get for pulling those. I thought the tool was a Parker tool or an AeroQuip tool but it's not. Aircraft Spruce has these for I think $149. I saw some other places that had them for about $170 or so but then when I got to looking I found them for anywhere from $50 to $100 about $80 for the price for them. There's actually a Chinese knockoff in fact uh, you can get one out of Aircraft Spruce for 20 bucks or something. I've seen it as low as 15 on eBay. and So that's what pulls this. It's not an aircraft tool specifically. They use this same type of stuff for putting the bands on uh, the rubbers, covers for CV joints and automobiles and other things like that. It's pretty common. You can buy this banding in the roll. There's different widths of it. There's another size of tool that's wider than this one. Anyway, you can buy this banding in a roll and then these clamps to fit right over them. Uh, cut it off as needed. Put these clamps on there and do the thing with it. So anyway, this is how this works. This is kind of a all-purpose clamp. And this tool, uh, it's got a little notch in it right here. Uh, a little place in it right there on the end. And you just slide that tool in there and it brings that clamp on there on the band to a stop and then there's a ratchet it's got a slot in it and that slides through the hole right here and slides over that band goes in there like that so then you just hold the tool and take the ratchet and that just pulls that band it tightens up against here and it pulls that band through and rolls it up on that shaft there coming out of that ratchet there's a lot of spring in that band when you go to tighten it up and this ratchet is kind of a loose ratchet so if you just do like that then it opens back up again there is a hex on this and you can put a wrench on it like that and hold it and then when you back up on the ratchet you get more purchase on it well it takes some pull to get it tight Okay, there's the spring. Now I put that hose at a bend so that the, and that pulled back a little bit because if I tightened it up on there, made it up to here when I went to bend it, it wouldn't have much flexibility in there. It would tighten that up. So that's the reason I did that. So now that's sealed up on the end so no flame can get in there and those, that's good. I go put these back on the oil cooler and that's one more thing taken care of. I wanted to get that done before I put the muffler on because it's a heck of a lot easier getting in there around that oil cooler. It's still hard to get a wrench and stuff in there on these nuts but it'd be a lot worse if that muffler was on there. I still have a little bit of room in there between the firewall and the engine.